The other important aspect, just as would be the case for um, batch or fed batch systems, is the equipment side of the problem. Um, so basic calculations to do with process fit type work in terms of, you know, is the reaction going to fit in the equipment we have available or how big does the equipment need to be in order for the reaction to run to completion um, and how is that likely to change as we scale up or scale down. Um, energy input, mechanical energy input type questions around how much power is it going to take to run this system at the desired scale in the desired equipment. Uh, for, for example, static mixers, it might have to do with how much pressure drop you're going to need uh, to, to, to take care of via your pumps. Um, beyond that sort of basic engineering calculations, uh, there's also, and this can be useful and interesting, to quantify the mixing effectiveness. So we provide, as many of you will know, utilities already that allow you to estimate mixing times and mixing performance in batch vessels. Uh, but uh, one of the things that we have done in a prototype form is provided tools for doing the same kinds of calculations in static mixers or generally tubular reactors. So that's one of the things that I'd like to ask you in the poll later in today's meeting is to what degree you'd like us to look into that area in the future. And then um, finally, you would look to connect all of that information together to make the predictions that are of interest, uh, either to optimize the system so here you'd be connecting information from models and utilities using Dynachem terminology and um, then trying to ask questions about is there some way we can do better with the result of the reaction, but then also asking questions about how is it going to scale up and uh, how scalable are the conditions. So there's a lot of similarities to the approach, the overall approach that you would take in terms of uh, tackling a continuous flow reaction. And then the third uh, type of operating mode that people have been interested in, certainly working with ourselves, is where you want to say, well, I want something intermediate between these two. I don't want a fully back-mixed reactor, and I don't want a perfect plug flow reactor, but I want something or I have something which is intermediate between the two. And um, this is a, we, we, we currently provide templates for one, three, and five stirred tanks in series but uh, people who know their way around Dynachem could turn these into models of 10 or 20 storage tanks without too much difficulty. Um, if you need to go to that level of discretization, if you like, of the residence time distribution, that would be unusual, but uh, it can certainly be done. So those are the kind of principal operating modes, and I'm going to say a little bit about each of those in today's webinar. Just to give you a flavor for uh, how people are using this capability, uh, very briefly, I've got two quick examples here, one from Pfizer and one from bristol Myers Squibb. Um, the Pfizer one was the, actually the award-winning presentation at our 2009 user meeting from David Erdman at Pfizer Kalamazoo. And uh, he talked about reasons why pharma uh, companies might be interested in running reactions in continuous, in continuous mode. Um, it's not necessarily a no-brainer. The, the reasons are really quite different to the reasons that you would have in other parts of the chemical industry, um, in part due to the smaller volumes involved in pharma. But uh, he listed quality and safety and throughput as potential strong reasons why you'd want to look at this. And then he presented some example results actually from a 3CSTR model uh, looking at conversion for a particular reaction. Conversion after tank one is the kind of mole curve and then conversion after tank two is the greenish one and conversion after tank three is the red one. So you can see progressively smaller increases in conversion but ultimately increased conversion as you progress through the cascade of third tanks. And uh, naturally there was a, an effort made there by Pfizer to look at comparing the predictions of the model with reality and uh, they were very satisfied with the level of prediction of conversion either from one tank or, or two tanks between the model and reality, which meant that they could then begin to answer questions about what's the best way in which to run that process. And uh, certainly that's one of the ways in which these models are useful is just in terms of convincing people and sort of getting them to see that the, the effects that they would expect to see really do happen in the model that helps them to believe in the model and also helps them to believe in the technology that potentially they could contemplate running their process in a different operating mode and um, get some benefit from doing it. 
second case I'll mention is from Bristol Myers from 2005, I think, at the AK annual meeting. This year's annual meeting is in Salt Lake City, 7th to the 12th of November, and a very interesting set of 24 sessions on pharma there, 12 of them on quality by design, 12 of them on more uh, broad pharma topics. But for anybody who's able to make the trip out there, I think that will be a, a meeting well worth attending. But uh, back in 2005 in Cincinnati, uh, Steve Chan and colleagues from Bristol Myers looked at a different reason for wanting to go continuous. This was a peroxide reaction, highly exothermic and large quantities of hydrogen peroxide involved in making the reaction go and uh, originally intended to run this reaction as a batch or fed batch system. And uh, BMS did what would be quite a classic thing to do. Um, they ran a couple of experiments in an RC1 calorimeter, measured uh, fed batch heat flow profiles for this reaction at two different temperatures in, in this particular screen grab, and then fitted a kinetic model to those heat flow data, held back some independent composition data obtained by um, HPLC grab sampling of the reaction mixture, and then used the basically verified the predictions of the model against the composition data. So used the heat flow data to develop the model and then um, tested the model really essentially on the orthogonal uh, composition data, and then proceeded to size and design uh, a plug flow reactor system. They actually changed the diameter partway along the reactor, also ramped the temperature in different ways in order to know how to run this reaction safely. And I suppose one of the key points I would take out of their presentation, um, and it's maybe something of a, of a caution to people who are looking at going from batch to continuous, is they emphasize how much more you need to understand about the system in order to reliably design uh, and, and scale a continuous flow system uh, compared to maybe a, the more forgiving operating mode that you get in a batch or fed batch system.